Yeah, I'm not too sure in terms of this lyrical boss unit. The divine skill is pretty mid, I would say. But at the same time, I can't help but feel that with the right moment of activating the divine skill, the opponent might just crumble under that attack. Or is it just because that this boss unit is a pretty bus lady with animal ears for some reason? This video is sponsored by Phoenix Ferro Cards. If you need supplies of singles or splits for Carfight Vanguard, especially the ones in the video, do check out Phoenix Ferro Cards today. And as a bonus, use the promo code MetaNerd to get an amazing 5% discount. And with that being said, let's get on with the video. Greetings, YouTube. Welcome back to the MetaNerd channel. I am Marcus, bringing you another video for Carfight Vanguard Divine Z. In this video, we'll be talking about the first main booster set of Lyrical Monastery boss unit, which is also a fated one of ever changing. I think this particular divine skill it's not really that flashy if you compare with the other three divine skills that we have currently so far and it also kind of makes sense that she loses to Welstra. <laughs> Welstra is just built different. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. And as Lyrical goes, she does have a very unique playstyle, playing towards like a more Highlander playstyle on your board as opposed to the main deck. And you are able to get a lot of skills out of having like different units on the board, depends on how many of them are of different name units, which is quite nice, I would say. It basically brings something new and really exciting for the whole of Carfi Vanguard. Without further ado, let's take a look at Chris Rain, the faded one of Ever Changing. Hopefully they don't change her like the next set. First and foremost is the right line, Lively Navy Tip Fane. Tufane? Is that how you pronounce that name? Although when this unit is rolled upon by Confident Aqua Musette, reveal the top card of your deck, call it the Rigor Circle if it is a grade 2 or less normal unit and put it into the hand if it is not. So once again, we kind of see like a straightforward right line skill as you know, most of the complicated stuff is being put to the Vanguard Circle. You are able to get any grade 2 or less normal unit cards to the few or you can get a grade 3 order as well as triggers to hand. It's gonna take a little bit of thinking of which card can be put called to Rigor Circle or which card can be put to hand. Just keep in mind here is that any grade 2 or grade 1 normal unit that you check from the top deck is able to superior call to the hand. Anything other than that, unless you're playing grade zero's normal unit, the rest of the cards are going to the hand. That's basically just how you look at it. This also means that you are able to gain some early aggression if you manage to call down a rear guard on turn 2, which is quite nice. But of course, this whole skill is basically quite RNG. It's not guaranteed that you're able to put out some early aggression. So it's best to to adapt accordingly to what card you reveal from the top deck. Super neat skill, not gonna lie. Next we have is the grade 2 right line, Confident Aqua Musette. Although when this unit is rolled upon, buy a grade 3 card with Chris Rain in its card name, reveal the top card of your deck, call it the Rigor Circle if it is a grade 3 or less normal unit, and put it into your hand if it is not. So basically, similar to the grade 1, you have more plus skills to gain more hand or bard advantage, but again, this is basically RNG because you only check the top deck. It is quite sad, but at the same time, not really because you don't cost anything you don't cost counter blast you don't cost soul blast you don't even cost energy blast so i guess it's okay in terms of that because you basically get a lot of hand size just from you riding on top of and this is without taking into the fact that you are able to discard the cycle card away to get more draws yeah this this whole deck looks to have like a bigger hand size than normal the main difference between this grade 2 skill and the grade 1 is that you are able to call a grade 3 normal unit this time as opposed to only call grade 1 or grade 2 you are able to call a grade 3 whereas any other cards that you reveal is gonna go to the hand which is very 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 nice. It's a pretty straightforward unit. It, there's not a lot to talk about because it's a much simpler skill as compared to any other deck out there that has complicated right line skill. But then again, it's because they do have some dedicated support, whereas this whole deck doesn't really have that. Quite sad, but again, not too bad. Next, of course, is the faded one of ever-changing Chris Rain. Active Vanguard Circle once per turn. Cast Candle Blast 1 and perform one of the following. If you have four or more units with different card names, perform two instead of one. And you have five or more, perform all instead of one. You are able to draw a card and energy charge three. You are able to choose one of your unit and it gets 15k power until the end of turn. You are also 
able to allow Chris Rain to get a critical plus one until the end of turn. The Divine Skill, Auto Vanguard Suck. At the end of the battle, this unit attack a grade three or greater unit. Cost, return all rigors to hand. Choose up to one unit card from your hand and call it the Rigor Circle. And until the end of turn, increase or decrease that unit's power and critical to match this unit. And of course, the Divine Skill Reminder attacks. Like I said in the beginning of this video, it's basically a Highlander view play style where you need to have like four or more different rigors on the field. Since it only says unit, this also kind of includes the Vanguard because the Vanguard is also a unit. So in order to get the full skill of the first skill is to have four or more different rigors onto the field. You are able to draw a card and energy charge tree, which I think is the biggest selling point of this deck. As this allows you to use more of the cycle card or anything that basically causes a lot of energy because with this card, you are able to get a total of six energy per turn, which is quite insane when you think about it, as opposed to the normal three energy per turn. The 15k power flexibility to any unit, yes, this does include the rear guard as well, is very, very nice. But from what I can see, the 15k power is most likely just going to go to Chris Rain because of the divine skill. The critical plus one is a very nice bonus considering how much power you are gaining as well as a certain card that provides a guard restrict for Chris Rain. It's a very disgusting card. I'm not going to lie. We will talk more about that when we get into the support card. The divine skill is a little bit meh. Not to say that it's weak, mind you, because it's not that flashy. It's not really that flashy and it's not really like game changing as opposed to the other divine skills. The other divine skills feels like they are doing a lot in terms of the overall game plan of the deck as well as the effectiveness of their boss unit. This one is basically just like an extra bonus that you can do to squeeze out more attacks and have that extra one attack to be as powerful as this card. Somehow, for some reason, I don't think this kind of skill should be a divine skill. But then again, if this skill is not a divine skill, it's going to be one of the most broken normal skill that we see so far. You are able to make a total of five attacks, but only one rearguard is of course going to get the power as well as critical at the time of you activating the divine skill. If only you are able to call up to two instead of just one, it is what it is, I guess. <laughs> I really hope that Chris Rain do gain a little bit more in terms of her support. But at this point in time, she's not really that great as of now. Because after you use the Divine Skill, if you don't successfully kill your opponent, the whole deck is basically a 3 attack deck, unfortunately. With a really thick hand size though. But then again, it is what it is. For the support card for Chris Rain, we have Harmonious Offshot. Play this with Cost Energy Blast 2. Choose 3 of your rear guards with different card name and they get 5k power until the end of turn. 5k power to 3 different rear guards is very 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 nice it's just there to make your initial two attacks before you activate the divine skill hit much harder although it's only a 5k but you could give like one whole column the 5k which makes the whole column a 10k boost which is very very nice but it still depends on how you build your board it's not going to matter most of the time but at the same time it might matter just a little bit in terms of the vanguard attack two energy is relatively cheap because you know chris rain is the only deck at the moment that is able to consistently get six energy Per turn so two energy isn't really asking much in my opinion if only the 5k power is able to give to the vanguard it would make this card much much more better but alas it is what it is i guess it is a common after all next we have cynical composer realm continuous rigor circle during the battle this unit boosted if you have a grade three or greater vanguard with chris rain in his card name this unit gets power plus 5k auto rigor circle when this unit boosts a grade three or greater vanguard with chris rain in its card name if you have four or more units with different card names cost energy blast tree until the end of that battle when your opponent would call cards without sentinel from the hand to guardian circle they must call three or more cards with different grades at the same time 13k booster during and after turn three for anything is very very nice but of course considering that the second skill is that scary most of the time this unit will be behind chris rain this is basically a flagberg guard restrict for chris rain attacks but it takes a little bit further than flagberg guard restrict flagberg doesn't really care what grades as long as it is only three cards as long as you guard three or more when he attacks he doesn't really care but for this one it's actually much more scarier than that it's actually much more scarier than that when you would want to call any cards to guard chris rain for that attack you will need to call three or more cards with different grades at the same time meaning that even if you throw down three cards that has different grades it might not be enough to guarantee to guard chris rain's attack so the only way around this is either you know guard or you know pg your hand if you don't have a pg when chris 
increased range attack with this boost increased range, yeah, it's most likely you can't guard. <laughs> you will probably no guard increased range attack and risk dying, as one would say. Luckily, this unit's skill is only active when she's boosting increased range. If it's boosting any other rear guards, you are in a big trouble. You are in big trouble, I would say. It does cost three energy, but once again, Chris Rain is able to get six energy every single turn. If, of course, you activate her skill, it is it does compensate for that. So I don't think it's that much of a hindrance in terms of the cost, in terms of resource spent. But you do need to be careful in terms of how many energy that you are using per turn, because I think there is one more card that does cost energy. So just be careful. Next, we have Innocent Orange Ants. Although when this unit is placed on Rhaegar Circle, if you have a grade three or greater Vanguard with Chris Rain in its card name, cost Kano Blast 1 and Energy Blast 3. Look at the top five cards of your deck. Choose up to one unit card from among them with a different card name from unit cards on your Vanguard Circle and Rhaegar Circle. Call it the Rhaegar Circle and shuffle the deck. Second skill, Auto Rhaegar Circle. When this unit attacks a grade three or greater unit, if you have four or more units with different card name, this unit gets 10k power until the end of that battle. So she is probably going to be the more important pieces that Chris Rain wants to have whenever she's trying to build the board. And she will probably be the first regard to be called considering that the restriction needs to you to only superior call cards from the top five cards of the deck that has a different card name from the unit cards on the Vanguard Circle and Rhaegar Circle. This does include herself, unfortunately. She's a really good card in terms of getting key pieces out from the deck as well as superior calling them to the few. She's also really nice in terms of getting the Highlander board and therefore unlocking Chris Rain skill. It's a very nice card and I'm not surprised that it is costing three energy on top of that one counter blast that this unit is asking for. And it also makes sense why Chris Rain is energy charging three every single turn. Yeah, it makes sense. She herself is a 20k attacker that can be buffed to 35k without any personal right is very, very nice. But of course, the 15k power will most likely be given to Chris Rain because of how the divine skill is designed. She, of course, will allow you to have a five attack when you activate the divine skill because she will be the only rigor to be called from hand after you use the divine skill and by you activating her skill you're able to call another stuff from the top deck which will allow a fifth attack although the fifth attack will be slightly rng and slightly lower power because the only power bonus that you can get from calling that other rear guard is persona riding which is quite sad you could potentially call down a booster but then again it's much better that you call down an attacker but it is what it is in terms of of how this divine skill is being designed. On the fourth attack, after you activate the divine skill, it doesn't really matter if you unlock the 10k because your power is going to be huge because of the divine skill. Yeah, most of the triggers that Chris Rain is dry checking is going to go to Chris Rain herself, which would then be passed to this unit. So it doesn't really matter if you get the 10k from the second skill. You will not have four or more units anyway. So yeah, it is what it is. And that is all for this video. Do let me know down in the comment section of what you think of the ever-changing faded one. Hopefully, she does gain more stuff to play with as opposed to the current one that we have. Me personally, I feel like she's a little bit under support as compared to the other three faded ones because the other three faded ones has a lot of synergy cards that is being played with it. But this one doesn't really feel that way because after the divine skill activation, she's only a three attack deck, which is quite sad. Not gonna lie. If only there will be a card that allows her to use divine skill a second time. Until that happens, we're just gonna wait or cope, whichever works for you. Do like and subscribe if you like this video. And of course, do Ring the bell notification icon so that you don't miss a video I up. With that being said, I'll see you on the field. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, 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 go.